This eyesore has been in our yard for since 2002, so that's 15 years or more. And um, the reason I'm doing this video is this actually, this structure right here might just save your life if you live above the 40th parallel. If you live anywhere where there's potentially heavy amounts of snow. It's a geodesic dome. That's the entrance right here. We got all our crap in here, as you can see. And this geodesic dome is made out of half inch EMT, half inch metal uh, electrical conduit. And basically, it's very simple, it's easy to make. You can see that joint right there. Um, I'll have to put the dimensions of the, the spires so that you can see what they are because uh, they're different. They're all different. But basically what you do is, is you cut the spires to the length and then you flatten out the ends and drill a hole in it in each end. Flatten out each end and drill a hole in each end. And what that, you just take a, a bolt and you put it through and that's how you hold the whole thing together with bolts it's very simple it's easy to make it's fairly cheap and it's strong and it's light the nice thing about a dome is heavy amounts of snow have a tendency to just sort of fall off of it fall off to the to the side now of course you can see that this is maybe eight feet nine feet tall and you can make them as tall as you want you can make a you can make a geodesic dome out of this type of material to cover your house obviously you're going to want to check into the strength of materials metal conduit comes in various sizes you can get it three quarters of an inch an inch in diameter and um, this is probably the smallest i think this is like half inch and it's pretty strong. This structure right here has been through numerous hurricanes. Um, most recently it went through Irma and uh, it's been through numerous hurricanes, numerous heavy wind storms. And um, the nice thing about um, geodesic domes, the nice thing about the dome structure is that it doesn't have a tendency to blow over. If you put like a bowl, like a plastic bowl on the ground and try to blow it over with a with an electric blower or something, it, it just it, there's something about the aerodynamics of a of a cup structure sitting on the ground that they just they don't like to blow over. So they don't blow over very easily, and the the geodesic structure distributes weight. So when you have snow piling up on a geodesic dome, it has a tendency to distribute that that load very efficiently so this is a structure that's cheap it's easy to build uh, you can get the plans anywhere they make them there's tons of manufacturers you know they could probably you could probably get one on you know get a dome from Amazon or you could get connectors from Amazon or whatever um, and you can see you see all that rope you can see all this heavy stuff hanging off of this that's metal cable there all this stuff that's hanging off of here is very heavy. You can see all that crap hanging off of that dome back there. And it's not even buckling. So, it's... These domes, they can take a beating. They can take a load. So, a structure like this, and heavy, heavy snow, might just save your life. You can have it on your property. You could have it to protect your food or use it as a shelter. You know, it's a temporary shelter, or you could even try to put it over your house. I've seen domes that are that have been built that cover entire dwellings, you know. And um, like I said, you can make a geodesic dome as big as you want to make it. But, you know, you're always going to want to research the strength of materials so you know if you can get a good estimate of what kind of materials you want to use, how you want to put it together. And like I said, this is very simply put together. 
the spires are just pieces of electro uh, electrical conduit that are flattened down on both ends that has a hole drilled in it and where the spires meet there's one two three four five six however many uh, ends meet up you put a bolt in it and bada boom ching bang you're done so I just wanted to pass that along to anybody out there you know you can make your own just do a little bit of research figure out what the exact dimensions are what I did a search for just do a search for geodesic dome dimensions and it's just like voluminous and you can get the dimensions for the spires what the how you know what the length of the different spires are here um, and when you look at this right here, okay, let's just, let's take a look at this for a second. You can see that um, this is all the same length, C is all the same length, and your A is all the same length. So you have a couple of sets of spires that are essentially the same length. Your A's are all the same length, and your C's are all the same length, and then you have B's, and they're all the same length as well. And the the B's kind of sort of are kind of sort of a uh, lesser. Uh, interconnecting piece and what you can do is um, now this is a, somebody else's design this is on Pinterest the links are in the description these are you see how these are flattened out here and um, I guess they screw these together or something but you know and they're connect you know different companies make connectors like this connector here you know it's a five-way connector this is using wood you can use wood you can use metal uh, but to me the easiest way to use to to do this is with electrical metallic tubing EMT of course when I did a search for EMT it wanted to show me an emergency medical technician which is not what we're talking about but anyway tubing is very strong to begin with let's look and see what we're talking about here with price wise material steel um, it's made they're made out of steel and what you do is these links come in I believe 12 feet 12 foot lengths so you can get a pipe cutter 899 for a metal conduit cutter you know heavy duty pipe tubing cutter you get one of those um, and now something a couple of really important points here if you're gonna put this together with metal conduit remember you're gonna want to use a um, that's a burr remover so there's a burr removing tool um, you know I'm not necessarily pushing that when they make all kinds of different burr removing tools but something that's crucial here if you guys are gonna make any kind of geodesic dome out of out of metal conduit when you cut that pipe it can be very very sharp and you can really cut the hell out of yourself with it so you want to remove the sharp edges remove the burr from that and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a um, sledgehammer um, uh, we used a press you can buy a press probably from Harbor Freight or something like that so this is the type of end that you're going for if you're gonna make it out of EMT electrical metal tubing and here you got some more you know uh, images this tie flattens 3 8 or half inch tube this is exactly what we have a half inch tube I believe and it flattens out and then you drill a hole right here so it's nice to have what we used is um, a drill press now look at this. So you got some nice looking stuff here. Nine degree metal bender. Uh, it might be nice to have a pipe bender, you know, if you're gonna do any sort of fancy stuff with that. I believe this is exactly what we have. This press right here, you know, um, you, we use that to flatten out the ends because it's just efficient. Because you you gotta cut whenever you're making a, a geodesic dome. You see how many tubes you're going to be working with this is how many cuts you're going to have to make and how many tubes you're going to have to flatten out and that's how many holes you're going to have to drill so you're talking about um geez i don't even know how many uh you'd have to just do the math on that you know what i'm saying uh, you flattened out on both ends dr that many holes drilled and then each one of these you just line the holes up from each from each flattened out piece you just line the holes up and you put a a uh, bolt big enough to to go through that and cinch it up you know uh tighten it up with a socket wrench or something you know make sure it's nice and tight and it will like purse out a little bit that's really what you want it to do you don't want it to purse in you want it to do what you want and it will generally that when you tighten this up that each one of these will kind of sort of purse out a little bit 
you know, it will, it will point out a little bit, and that's what you really want. And this, and it just becomes very strong. The structure becomes very strong. It's strong. It's lightweight. You can, you know, ours, the one that we have, you can pick it up and move it with two people, you know. And the wind, you know, it's been, ours has been out there for, like I said, 15, 17 years, something like that between 15 and 17 years and it's been through numerous hurricanes never gotten blown over once you know uh and it just uh, it'll just take a beating it's had tree limbs fall on it and everything else they're just extremely you know because of the way the load is distributed throughout the structure they happen to be very strong and the 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 upshot of that is that if you're buried in snow if you got snow up to your uh eyeballs Six feet of snow is a lot of snow to fall in one time, which is what they had in Switzerland, what they've had in, I think they might have more than that in Switzerland. Um, five feet, I believe, in, in Pennsylvania at one time, which is a lot of snow. It happens, you know, this is not totally unusual, you know. This is something that we've that we've seen around. But, um, you know, when you start talking about 10 feet or more of snow, you want something that will, that will hold that weight. Now, another thing you're going to want, if this is like a survival type of situation, if you're living above the 40th parallel, you're also going to want to have some sort of PVC pipe. You're going to want probably two inch, maybe, you know, the larger, you're going to want a larger size. Um, and you're going to want it inside your dome. You want to keep that inside your dome so you can fit the pieces together and force the pipe up through the ceiling of the dome. Uh, sounds extreme, but if you're inside here and you've got snow up to here right you're gonna probably you may need to have a pipe or something that you can that and an, and an opening here somewhere in a little small opening up here somewhere where you can take that pipe and you can run that pipe up to the surface so you can get air and then maybe have some sort of I don't know uh, fitting or something on top of of your pipe so that it will you know pull air in or have a fan on it or something or some sort of way to get that you know to get that air down in there um the only reason that people suffocate when they get buried in avalanches is because when you exhale you, the the moisture from your mouth causes the snow to freeze around your mouth and you can't breathe so when you have a lot of snow like that i don't know it may breathe you may be able to you know what i mean it may, you may be able to breathe through that you may not, you know, actually suffocate from being buried in the snow if you have a dome around you. But, um, you know, it might be good to have something to stick up. You know, obviously you're going to want to have a cell phone with you or something like that. Some sort of a way for people to be able to, you know, a loud noise-making device of some sort. You know, whistle, uh, car horn, whatever. Something that will fucking, so people can find you if, if they need to. And it sounds extreme. I know. I'm not really, you know, look, hey, nobody really knows what's going to happen. But um, it's good to be prepared. And this is a fairly, you know, the electrical, making it out of electrical metal conduit, uh, electrical metal tubing is, let's see, these are three bucks a piece, right, for half inch, which is what we made ours out of. It's made, it's steel, hot galvanized finish. You know, gray, that's exactly, this is exactly what we used. You know, you may want to use a larger grade, um, three-quarter inch or something like that. Even one inch, you could use one inch. It's a little, might be a little harder to work with, but it's stronger. And, uh, yeah, then that, you know, look, if you're in a place where it's going to be snowing, like catastrophic snowfall, you know, it might, you know, might save your life. Like I said, you could build this over your house if you had to. Anyway, that's it. My name is R. Crosby Lyles, and this has been News from the Can. Thanks for watching. See you.